folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report out every Monday morning with a new issue weekly and updates throughout the week. You can check that out under the newsletter tab. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And don't forget about the two webinars he's got under the services tab, Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads and Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies with our man Teddy Kegstad. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Do we got him, Al? I can't yep. hear him. I'm there here. We go. I got gotcha. you. Good morning, Teddy. Good morning. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. How you doing, Tommy? What do you want to start uh, talking about with first? Oof. Uh, I know. It's been a couple weeks. We've had a few things happen over a couple weeks, Teddy. Um, maybe maybe kick things off with, with yields and, and the dollar, because that's where I find myself looking okay. most, of course, yields and, and the movement there, and then the dollar at about 106. Those, of course, related. But, yeah, walk me through what you're thinking of the action, especially over the last week or so. Okay, well, yesterday we uh, spiked through our uh, upside target level, um, which was right around this or just below where we're trading at now, and we made a higher move high today. I think we're pretty much running out of gas on this rally right now. I wouldn't expect this to become a bear, but I think we're ready for a nice little correction. You know, I think we could get every bit of a 10, 15 percent pullback over the next week or so. You know, um, the reason I'm saying that is that we've uh, the dollar has, has remained very strong. The election, you can call it an election rally, um, but I think it's really more due to the fact that yields have stayed higher um, and they topped out last week. You know, we've been going sideways over the past few sessions. Uh, they're not retracting, but they're also not increasing. You know, and I think that this dollar move is more interest rate driven you know, yield driven. And I think also the fact that, you know, we do know that the Fed's going to cut again, most likely at the next meeting. In the next couple meetings, they're probably going to cut a quarter point, you know. So I would think that you probably have every bit of a half to three quarters of a point that are going to happen over the next few months, the next few meetings. Uh, and at least right now, as long as numbers are still ref at the rate that they're moving right now as far as CPI and PPI and the inflationary numbers, I'd watch the unemployment number. I think that's uh, claims, you know, tomorrow, I think that's going to be a big deal. Unemployment is still going to be a big thing. If we see a lot of hiring, you know, and also job growth, which we already heard, you know, certain companies now they're pulling back out of China since, especially since the Trump election. I mean, John Madden's moving their shoe factories back to the United States. You know, I mean, I know that's just one company, but the reality is, is it's happening already, you know, so and that's going to mean what? more hiring you know um the ford already announced too that the layoffs that they were originally intending that now they're tapping the brakes on that one you know so i mean this would mean that the fed will be a little bit more restrictive than they were probably leaning when they started this cutting cycle you know if you will i don't see them being overly aggressive you know, at least until after Trump is inaugurated until February or March and see how things go. You know, I, I think you're going to see continue to see quarter point cuts. But like I said, I don't think you're going to see them overly aggressive because they know that unemployment, which they want to see high. They want to see people out of work. Well, the reality is, guess what? People are going back to work, you know. So um, at least that should be what we see over the next, you know, three to six months. You know, and if that is the case, that's a heavy fundamental that's going to be weighing on yields, you know. So I don't think you're going to see. Uh, we could be in a big range trade, to be quite honest with, with you, with yields over the next few months. You know, I think that, you know, we had this conversation before the election that in this new cutting cycle, the market's not going to lead it. The banks are going to be making and they may not be doing as many loans because yields are staying high, but their spread is going to be much higher. Their, pro their margins are going to increase no matter what, you know, so um you know, I think that as they cut, you know, some more, you know, I mean, is home buying going to increase? Once again, markets dictating higher yields, as long as yields don't retrace at the rate that the Fed's cutting, you know, that that percentage of expectation, I think, that was in the market is going to be a little bit of a letdown, you know. So, um, so it'll be interesting as far as I think that if I'm right on this and yields are kind of capping out, you know, especially because we have another cut coming. So they should retrace a little bit. And if that's the case, the dollar should fall back under pressure. So I'm leery of being too much of a bull where it's at right now. I'm, I'm not bearish by any means, but I'm definitely looking for a nice uh, profit taking slide. 
And you tell that was a great walkthrough, man. I appreciate it. And you've walked, uh, you know, I, I thought of you even this morning and as this dollar has approached because it's quite a range too, right? You've talked about even, you know, whether it's the euro, the range we've been in for a couple of years and I have even the dollar, you're talking about 100 to 106, which is pretty remarkable when you're talking about two full years and yet yeah, six points. Um, and then the euro US dollar, of course, just inverse that of the dollar and there's more to it, of course, but it is interesting in terms of that range, and we'll see if we go forward. Uh, you know, I was talking about everybody does it on the campaign trail, rhetoric. Where Where's rhetoric going to come to reality? And we'll find out how Chairman Powell, but I think you're right, you know, and, and he said at his press conference, it, it, it would be a wrong move by him to try and predict what's going to happen, but for any politician, so that maybe they wait and we'll see what happens, and it's going to get interesting when we start seeing. What about crude? Tying into, you know, another administration. Sure. We talked about this. 6723, man. What do you think about crude? Talk about uh, <clears throat> drill, baby, drill. Yeah, well, that's, you know, before the election a couple weeks ago, last time I told you, I'm like, it's going to be a pretty simple layup uh, on this one. If Harris was to get elected, right now we'd already see an uptick in gas prices and we'd be on our way towards 75, 80 bucks on the way to 100. Um, with Trump, now coming into office, now he's got to be he's got to be inaugurated, you know. So there's some things some things will not be enacted until you know uh, January. But we know on day one they are. You know the transition team I'm sure will be dealing with people in the oil sectors, letting them know where their plans are and what they're planning on doing. You know, and I know that they're not they're preparing to start turning things back on. You know, and remember these things sure. don't just get you don't just flip a switch in the oil industry to turn things on and off. So you got to figure that they're gearing up for, you know, come inauguration day that they're going to be ready to go. So they got a couple of months to start prepping, getting things going. So I think you're going to see the oil services industry start to heat up, you know, and if that's the case and we start seeing things, I think you're going to see, I think we're going to, we're in a, in a sell rally forecast for crude. I don't see us getting much more above $75. If there is it, I think it'll be a spike. I think if anything, we're going to see crude continue to push down towards um, $60. I mean, is it going to see 50? I think it will, but not until next year, you know, but I think we are on that trend now where I think that you have to look to sell rallies and be careful buying into breaks because um, we may spike pretty low. You know, I think we may have a nice Christmas gift. I mean, pumps, you can see it at the pumps already, you know, literally within just one week, how much gas is retraced. I mean, we're looking at a dollar. You know, I don't know how it is in Florida, but it's literally a dollar in Chicago. You know, I mean, that's a big move for oil. Oil hasn't hasn't gone down that much in price per barrel, you know, but at the pumps, <laughs> it's, I mean, that's a big deal, you know. So and if that's the trend and that continues, yeah, I like it. I, I definitely think that the uh, the crude oil market is definitely in a bear. I mean, we hit we hit a key, key level today. We're on our downside breakout level. We close below that today. Yeah. New lows. I like it. We can all like cheaper gas prices coming at you. Can you hang with us for one more segment, Teddy? I wanted sure. to talk about the yen and maybe some other currencies. We're going to talk a little bit of dollar yen when we come back, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget to check out his Tiger Forex report. And let's dive into the yen if we can, Teddy. I got it sure. up here at 154.84. What do you think about that yen where we are? Uh, I think it's getting kind of toppy. Uh, the reason I say that is because if my forecast for crude is correct, um, unless you were to see a big reversal um, bull rally in crude um, and if yields were to stay actually very strong and, and push actually new highs, meaning lower prices, um, then I could see maybe seeing some higher levels but getting very toppy. Um, I, I think no matter what, just a correction in the dollar index um, and the dollar itself should pull back the yen back. To, like we're trading at what 154.80 right now, so I could see us getting back to probably around 151 half. Up, stay above 150. You know, on a correction right now, that would be a good uh, support area, um, especially if yields stay rather firm. If they don't pull back in a big way, you know. So, if, like for instance, like I said, if my scenarios that I spoke of in the last segment are correct as far as how yields are trading and how oil is trading, if that is correct and it stays in that manner for the next say month or two, I would say that it's going to be 
really tough for the yen to really have an accelerated rally, but also not going to it's not going to have a big slide. So that's why I like that 151 half area. I'd be really surprised if it got down to 150 again without seeing a very um, big uh, pullback in yields. You know, because oil, I don't like I said, I don't see an accelerated slide in that. I don't see it going to 50 bucks in the next few weeks. You know, now if it was to fall yes. off, if the floor was to fall out. Then I could see the yen, you know, really catching a nice slide and get back down to 147, maybe even get down towards the uh, the lows from uh, September, you know. But those, I think, I, I think, like I said, unless you really see an aggressive trend in the interest rates and crude, I don't see you getting that big of a sell-off, you know. So I think what we're establishing is a big wide range trade actually for the yen for the next few months. I appreciate the walkthrough, man, and you've walked yep. us through in the past so often, you know, crude. USA as a producer, how that translates to the dollar. So that's awesome. And folks, check out that Tiger Forex report. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Have a good one, Tommy.